We're back, everything good? Okay. Try and collect this clock. There we go. Let's see if I make it to the end, get to the cat. So I consider Glider Pro to be one of my all-time favorite games. And that was the version that, yeah, that was the version he made in in a uh, '94, I think, yeah. commercial game. I love that little uh, graphic where you see it um, folding the glider each time. Candles also give you lift. Oh, shit. Oh shit. Let's turn on the thermostat. There we go. Okay, almost at the end. <laughs> and I don't like that. So if you reach the end, there's a cat on the windowsill and you've got to try to escape the cat and get out of the house to be free and you're, you're out of your, your prison of the house. You're a glider that can roam free around the whole world. So there were a small number of rules. I love the way he, he shows you what's good and what's bad, very simply. And now since I, I showed you that, uh, Let's pop into Stunt Copter for a moment because Stunt Copter was also made by someone from Kansas. And this guy, Dwayne Blem, was a massive inspiration to John. He was um he he was proof that you didn't have to be in California to make software. Uh, John John looked looked to him as 
as kind of this software hero and he his name soft dorothy software came from hometown software he took the the idea of let's do wizard of oz things and came up with his own take on that okay um so this was using a technique called uh, off-screen bitmaps and so it would render all of these graphics and he'd have them uh, not visible on the screen until the, m the moment they're needed can set the speed So it's a pretty simple, pretty simple game. It's like if you think of early iPhone games, but it's an early Mac game. So you fly around in your copter and you drop your stunt man. Do five in a row and it goes fast. Also drop from really high. If he dies, he kind of turns into a pancake. The way I used to play is to try and hit the driver. Uh, keep in mind, I was a young kid at the time, but that was my aim. I would go up to the top of the screen and I use the cloud and try and drop him in such a way that he will land on top of the driver as the ideal, or on top of the horse would would be okay too. And I, I got some kind of uh, fun satisfaction out of the that sound of the uh, as he dies. So there I toppled the horse. <laughs> it's a very simple game. But a lot of fun and and really well loved. Besides Stunt Copter, uh, Dwayne made a, a couple of other games. One of them was Kara Shootout, which was mentioned in the comments earlier. Uh, it's like a shooting parlor shooting game. Once again, you got off-screen bitmap. <laughs> That box. Nice little touch there. So sadly, uh, Dwayne Blame died um, after making a few games. Balls. This is going to be quite difficult to play if I'm not uh, full screen. I'm going to accidentally click off screen at some point. The idea is you want to you want to get all of the you, you want to get that number of items that you see up the top. So right now I need to get one more uh, teacup. And I can get bonus points if I can hit this thing that's moving across the bottom. And so you repeat and you repeat, and then uh, eventually you, if you're good, you'll get through all the levels. And uh, I forget what happens then. Uh, someone in the comments can can mention. And so all these uh, graphics are things that are actually built into the Mac. They're they're glyphs. So 
is using the, the Cairo font. Hence the name Cairo Shootout. And so I took too long. <laughs> and so if I go the, the other hardware speeds, it's going to make things go probably really slow on this emulator. And I'm not sure if I've got uh, his other game on on this thing. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Who played Phrase Craze back in the day? <laughs> Please pay so I can eat. Pretty straightforward Wheel of Fortune game. But it was very popular. tennis shoe. And so it continues on and on. And you could make your own uh, terms to put in there. Uh, and I, I did briefly think about whether I should uh, set up a game that involves uh, all of us playing together, me against the, the commenters or against specific commenters, but I think it'd be a bit tricky with uh, some of the the lag that's going on uh, any other requests uh, let's pop into Mac golf for a moment um, uh, no okay oh we won't So Mac Golf, uh, I unfortunately can't show you right now, but it was actually the most popular Mac game of the 1980s, uh, in terms of sales at least. Um, Crystal Quest, uh, Shuffle Puck Cafe, Dark Castle, these sorts of things may have been more popular, I'm not sure, but uh, there was 
Okay, good. I'm still right speed. There was nothing selling like Mac Golf, uh, which I found really interesting when I learned that because I know what a big deal the Lynx series was in the 1990s. Uh, with a lot of office workers would would play Lynx during their work time. Uh, how about we pop into the manhole CD-ROM version? So the manhole was made by Robin and Rand Miller, the brothers who were the the, the main people behind Mist and Riven. Uh, Robin Robin did all the all the art and and pretty much all the design. Um, originally, they released this as the manhole, uh, a game by Robin Miller, when they got a proper commercial deal. The idea came from, from Rand. He wanted to make a, a children's book, interactive children's book. And he knew his, his younger brother, Robin, was a, a fine artist. So he asked Robin to, to, make, to make the graphics for them. But then when Robin opened up Hypercard and, and saw this blank page staring at him and he didn't know what to do he just ended up drawing a manhole cover and then he didn't want to turn the page as it were he wanted to think okay where can we go next and he drew another image with the manhole cover open and then a beanstalk comes out and so then immediately he's thinking okay well i could go down i could go up and he still didn't want to turn the page and so instead of making a children's book they made an adventure game, an exploration style adventure game. It's very open ended and it was kind of made just on a whim. He, he, he just did whatever he thought of. And this CD ROM version has uh, a lot more audio in it than the, the floppy disk original. to sleep while standing on one leg. One of the things that makes this game uh, so special is that it, uh, it has an invisible interface. You just click Hello to, to go places and to interact with things. <laughs> It was um, also one of the uh, very earliest, maybe the first CD-ROM game ever published. I was quite surprised when I when I played the CD-ROM version for the first time and discovered that they had used a different voice for the walrus. Uh, in the in the floppy disk original, the the voice is slightly different. I think it's because they added some extra stuff 
in the CD-ROM release and they needed to record some extra vocals and it would have been weird if they had two different voices. It looks like you want to visit my home. Follow me. It's you. Well, make yourself comfortable while I take my nap. So Walter Walrus, the third. As it just continues on and on, you, you can keep exploring for ages. Uh, it's a wonderfully imaginative game. And, and so from there, they, they then made Cosmic Osmo and the, and the Worlds Beyond the Holy Mackerel, I think that's the full title, uh, which uh, had a bit more polish in it, uh, the, same, the, the same design style of... of just making it up as you go. Uh, Rand was more involved in that one, though. They they really discussed things together, and they thought about, okay, what if we have some some singing chili peppers uh, and all sorts of weird things. Uh, the one that, that I played a lot of when I was a kid was their third game, Splunks, uh, where Rand, in his, in his accent, calls it Spelunks. Uh, and that is more of a, a, a kind of a collection of science mini games uh, set in an adventure world than it is uh, uh, an open-ended adventure like these other ones. Um, I can actually show you Splunks if you if you'd like. I have the color the the black and white version with a, a different emulator set up that I can swap to if you want, or I've got. Entirely black and white right here. Uh, or if you'd like to look at something else, we can do that. Inigo Gets Out was another early hypercard game um, that was that was very I influential. It's a cat 
that's decided to go out and and have a little adventure. Oops, into the water. Very cute and charming little game. Uh oh, there's a snake. And I ran on home. Wonderful little game. So any requests? Uh, Hey, the colony. Another ridiculously hard game. Mankind has left the cradle of Earth and is beginning to eye the galaxy. He has begun to colonize distant planets, but yet to meet any alien life forms until now. and it was made by one guy. That can't be good. And here we are. So this is a real-time 3D first-person game. Uh, it's using a lot of the same ray tracing tricks that id Software used on, on their early 3D games, uh, but most of the graphics are wireframe. And you move yourself around with the map, with the the mouse. So you go down to move back, forward to move, up to move forward, left and right to to turn. Uh, some of you may be interested to know that uh, Lucas Pope, the creator of Papers Please, and uh, a guy who's currently working on a game called um, The Return of Oprah something Obra Dinn, uh, which is a, a, an old-school Mac aesthetic in a, a new game. He was heavily inspired by this, by this scene specifically, uh, where you, you enter the, the ship and it's all dark. And so here we can already we can already die in various ways right here.
really slowly drawing out the screen. Okay. So, turn on my lights. And let's look at the world all turned around again. So you see down in the bottom left you've got a kind of a, a mini-map. Giving you some nice big arrows to tell you you want to go this way. This dark spot here is actually a door. I go through it and look at that, there's a Macintosh on the table. If I go up higher I, I move faster. So the idea here was kind of to create a, a world, a, an, an adventure world, something that you could really immerse yourself in. And I think he did it pretty well, but unfortunately he also made a game that was almost impossible to actually play, unless you cheated. So we've just learned that something very bad has happened at the colony and so we'd better try and get there real fast. Uh, but to actually get to the colony we're going to need to put on a spaceship, put on a spacesuit I mean, <laughs> uh, and, and make sure it's powered up and everything. Oh, am I stuck here? No, I accidentally clicked back. Okay. So the only time I've ever actually made it to the colony facility has been when I cheated. I, I gave myself uh, almost infinite health and and everything else. I'm, I, I might have a save game of that on here, I'll check in a moment. I'll just wander around a bit more. What is that? Okay. seem to have gone straight across the hall into another room. I am not turning off the lights. Okay, let's walk forward. another computer. Making good use of the same graphic. But now we have some extra information. So in much the same way that you have later games like Marathon using terminals to to get across the story, this does the same thing. Uh, there are various things you can learn. Uh, 
about the world and what happened to its inhabitants. Let me see if I can... Not letting me? Okay, let's back up. There we go. <laughs> There's a menu option for faster. Love that. Very cool effects on the about screen. Let's see if I have a save game. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I don't remember that part, what I need to do. Uh, <laughs> so, maybe I can't show you the colony facility after all. <laughs> so there is a, a fantastic editor that you can use to give yourself a whole lot of extra weapons and life and armor. And really, I think this is the only way to make the game playable because it's so incredibly difficult. And he, he David, regrets it um, now that he made it so hard. Where he he basically would kill you for anything. If you think about uh, Sierra adventure games from the nineteen eighties, and then you you dial up the the sadism by you know several notches then you have the difficulty of the colony. Uh, there are bad guys that that you can that you can shoot uh, the the trip from your spaceship to the colony facility is quite harrowing um, there are all these aliens um, floating around trying to kill you. I don't know if I can pull up any graphics in here. No. Anyway, you can you can look at screenshots and videos of the game online. Uh, David actually did a, a couple of videos himself several years ago on YouTube uh, where he was playing through the, the color version uh, and he talked about how he how he made the games a bit and uh, what what he was trying to do and what he actually did and all those sorts of things um, and these days he's actually still uh, very much in cutting edge technology he uh, developed a couple of uh, lens technologies for augmented reality and virtual reality and he's also uh, notable in, in video game history for um, being a key figure in the creation of the Rainbow Six games, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Uh, so Tom Clancy is someone who he knew through the colony. Clancy had written to him uh, after playing the colony. He was really moved by, by one of the stories on one of those uh, Macintosh computers uh, about a, about a, a, a sacrifice that some people were making to protect their children. And so even though um, David did not uh, directly uh, work as a programmer or designer on Rainbow Six, he, he kind of made the connections and he uh, I think was a, an investor or something like that on the game. Um, and it used some of the technology that he'd built post-colony. Uh, so that's a really cool bit of trivia. Uh, I I can I can keep going for a little bit longer. So, does anyone have any uh, requests for a last one or two games to play? Uh, I'm thinking probably someone wants Scarab Ra. Anything else?
Okay, let's go into Scarab of Ra, then I'll pop into Cosmic Osmo quickly after that. Uh, and if anyone has any other requests, I might be able to squeeze in one more after that. Okay, so here we have Scarab of Ra. It is uh, kind of a roguelike, but in in a, a first-person viewpoint. Uh, Rick Holsgraf was working at Apple when he he made this. Uh, uh, he actually uh, got permission from his his superiors to to work on the game. Uh, I think I have the document that they they wrote up for that. Um, we were going to put it into the book, but I don't think. It I don't think it made it in the end. Um, it didn't really make sense in the design and the layout of the book to have a, a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes graphics. It made more sense because of the way the images were used to have more screenshots. But I will be sharing some of the, all those some of those things later. Uh, very nice and detailed help menu. So we are Mississippi Smith. Very long backstory there that's completely optional. Got some tips on how to play. It's fantastic to see a, a shareware game that was so well documented how to play. And so you have different speeds. Uh, it's got three of them listed here that you can you can adjust in various ways. You've got inventory whole lot of hints. You look at a map. It's it's got an auto mapping feature, um, but how detailed the map is depends on how fast you're moving. And uh, you can create notes right inside the game. You don't need a pen and paper. So let's start wandering. Oh look, there's a key on the ground. So I walk over the top of it, pick up got a key and some other things. Can't walk into the wall. Here we have a nice bit of art on the wall there. Turn. Use the key to open the door. And these, this top row here involves moving and turning automatically. We found a small melon, <laughs> and it's exploded. So the idea here is just it's a maze. You've got to try and find your way through each level. Um, there is a, a, a bad guy of sorts at the end that you can beat. Uh, it's a non-violent game, though. Um, because Rick abhors violence. He didn't want you to have any kind of combat or anything. So it's kind of a non-violent roguelike, which makes it a bit rare. <laughs> Oops. And you want to get, as usual, you want to get as much money as possible. Uh, I could Right now it's dark, so I could really do with some oil to <laughs> get some light back. Let's have a look at the map. So that's where I am. Oh, 
and another key. Thankfully, that trap was already sprung. And here's a door. So the original version of this had, oh, maybe non-violent, but it's not without dangers. The original version of this, I think, had 20 levels or something like that. And then uh, he thought that no one would ever get through all that. But then he got he got a letter from someone saying that they had they'd reached the end and they were kind of disappointed there was nothing there, nothing more to do. And so he went and made a new version that had way more. And... To his knowledge, no one has ever finished the, the final version. No one's ever made it through every single level. What's down there? Nothing. I'm surprised that we haven't encountered an animal yet. Ooh, another trap. Where haven't I been? again Ooh, getting real rich now Which way am I facing? Okay. Forward again, left, left. Oh, 
As you can see, each time I look at the map, it's getting filled in a bit more. So that Found the key. The right door. Hmm. So anyway, it just continues like this. Uh, it's really cool game to, to play. You can lose yourself in it for a while. <laughs> I'm a quitter. Okay, there we go. That's Scarab of Ra. And I have Cosmic Osmo here. I love the icon. Uh, one of the things that I talked about with our designer, Darren, that, that I liked the idea of doing in the book was uh, using all those icons in some way, the 32 by 32 bit p uh, pixel icons. Because every, pretty much every Mac game had a unique icon and some of them are, I think are really nice looking. Unfortunately, he couldn't uh, find a, a nice, neat, clean way to use them. You can see already the, the improvements they were making in their, their skills. Save some electricity. Now I think it's absolutely delightful that you have cotton swabs as your missiles. Away we go. Uh, 
And here we are at the planet that I showed you earlier. I have a uh, my own version of. So you see, I pretty much ripped off the boat, did a very similar tree. But my my version of the house was a bit different, and I had a fair bit going on here that this doesn't. And so what I see, what you see here, you can basically go anywhere. You can click on something and just go there. So I can go over here. Hop into the SS Osmo. Maybe make a phone call. Uh, somewhere else, elsewhere in the game, you have other phone numbers, and you, once you write them down, you can then dial them and get messages. We're going for a little boat ride. And the great thing here is just all experimental. You you go around doing whatever you want to do. You see something interesting, you go there, you you explore, you adventure, you discover. <coughs> Just keep clicking on things. Okay, sit back, relax, and enjoy the trip. I find it really sad that we don't have games like this anymore. Oh boy, what a life!
they hadn't figured out gravity yet. And look at that, no Macintosh. And so here's another phone. It'll have a different number on it. So you can call the, the boat we were on earlier. Take a look in the fridge. So as with the manhole, this had a, a CD-ROM version as well as a floppy disk version. Uh, the CD-ROM version, uh, I think, was colorized. And I had some extra animations and things. <laughs> Can play with some blocks. Just love that everywhere you turn, there's there's something else you can do. <laughs> Imagine the fright you'd get if you opened your eggs. That happened. One of these days, I'm going to go on a diet. <laughs> so 
Nice touch. Go ahead in. See, your eyes mow you. He's standing around in there. That was very cool. And look at that, SS Osmos here again.
based on hyper-automatic pilot. You'll be arriving shortly. Oh, put me back here. Interesting. <laughs> ah, the upside down room. And we've walked back to the kitchen. 
about that. And so you can just kind of keep exploring Cosmic Cosmo for hours and just see where things take you, just in the same way that uh, that these guys made the game. Uh, it, it was great fun to just wander around, and just keep going through things. I got a lot of time for for those early Cyan games, and I I really hope that that Rand is able to get some more elements of of those sorts of things in, into into the new things that that they're doing now that they're back on to the the Mist style adventures. Um, let's just quickly pop into Crystal Raider and then. I'll show Shadowgate's about box, <laughs> and then we'll wrap it up. So this is the predecessor of Crystal Quest. And the fun thing here is that he had no idea what Crystal Quest would even be when he wrote this message. Seems like it's not running quite right. But you can see if you're familiar with Crystal Quest, it's basically the same game, it's just not as polished. You gotta collect all these crystals, not get yourself killed. Uh, you can shoot in the direction that you're moving. And when you collected everything, you got to try and get through this door without killing yourself. Seems like there is no way to actually stop playing. <laughs> Which is a pretty devious thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I can't seem to find a way to actually exit. <laughs> Okay, now people wanted me to open up Shadow Gate, so let's go there. So this time you got more of a traditional fantasy adventure type thing going on. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now to me that looks like it's um it's paying homage to uh another game. Um I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, a game that was ported to the Mac. Uh had graphics much like what we saw there in its uh is uh, victory scenes. So the idea here is pretty much the same as same as Deja Vu, but it's spookier. <laughs> and it's very important that you keep your torch lit, because if it goes out, you're in big trouble. Let's see if I can leave it behind. And so if you try and walk around in the dark, you will die. Like that. And the other thing I remember about Shadowgate is that it loves to terrify you. So you'll be walking around in total silence for hours and then suddenly, out of nowhere, you get something like this pop up on the screen with a scary sound. All right, well, that was, that was a good bit of fun. Uh, I thank you all for, for hanging out with me, playing some old Mac games, talking about them. Uh, it was good to good to spend a few hours, uh, rather longer than I'd planned, uh, talking about all these cool things from the 1980s, and there there are lots more great games from the era that that I didn't touch on here, and lots more stories to share. Of course, you can read about heaps of it in my book. Um, I'll be doing more streams at some point uh ov obviously I'll, I'll do something in with some 90s games one day uh i'm hoping to also get some developers to to hang out with me and we play their old game or some of the games that they were inspired by um kind of like i did with matt birch uh, a couple of years ago when i was trying to get money to to uh, fund production of the book um but of of course, all of those things they they depend on the on the developers being willing and available. I'll do my best, but I I do have to work this all around my freelance schedule and working on another book. Um, so we're I'm going to be doing a, a second book for Unbound.